How's it going everyone? Today I wanted to talk about the new Dev Insight here, released about the new abilities and armor changes, previews. Uh, there's some nice changes in here. I really hope Destiny can, the, the, the Destiny developers actually can um, start making some changes. The best thing they can do is just rapid fire change things. So um, they need to stop waiting until each season to roll them out. But you know, let's just give it a go and see what we got here. So they have some new rollouts here. The second wave of exotic armor changes. They need to kind of wrap them out a little faster, but they, eh. You know, can't complain. Nothing changes here. So, Hunters, Knucklehead Radar. The functionality of the Faux Tracer exotic helm has been completely removed from that exotic and added to Knucklehead Radar on top of its existing benefits. All right, not bad. Um, not the biggest of changes, but you know, something. Uh, Faux Tracer. Uh, so we took some cues from the popular monochromatic Maestro artifact and perk this from this one. Uh, when you deal damage with one of your abilities, you gain a damage bonus of weapons that you have the matching damage type, your subclass. Additionally, you defeat an enemy you've damaged with one of your abilities. Uh, you will spawn one of the collectible objects associated with subclass. That's pretty good, I will say. That's um, that's actually not a bad change. So more of those uh, Iron Traces, Fire Sprites, whatever, for more armor charge kind of gives you more customization with your build. Um, so that might be actually a pretty good one to use. I, I, I may actually give that one a go and uh, definitely test it out. Uh, so if you be a foe tracer, all right, something, something nice, not nothing too crazy. I would, I would say it's probably closer to like the best for radius change where C minor actually was pretty good. So let's see, this one may be in a decent change for it. So, uh, lucky raspberry or the raspberry, uh, this exotic was a little too un, uh, unreliable in its current form. So we take it a crack at streamlining its energy gains while leaving some of its benefits intact. The exotic still expands the chaining capabilities of arc bolt grenades, but now instead of basing the grenade energy gains on those change, each time you deal damage with the enemy with the lightning strike from jolted from the jolted condition, what base basing the instead of basing the grenade uh, it's in those change each time you deal to man, that's not bad. Not another again another one. <laughs> I like the jolts. The only issue is I don't know how good arc is going to be in the next season. Um, as they kind of did a lot of arc things here. So they may roll it into the next one as they did uh, for the first season. It was like solar void and then it switched to void arc. So maybe in the next season, maybe arc and then, uh, stasis. I think stasis is going to be the main one, of the next one. So, eh, something else, something nice. Uh, we undone the previous nerf to dusk, uh, grenade cooldowns when using this exotic sweet, because I, I feel like again, if stasis is going to be the main one, that's going to be nice. Um, yeah, can't complain about that stuff. Uh, for Titans here, Titans have Ice Field Mantles and then Doom Fang Pauldrons, Path of the Burning Steps, and Eternal Warrior. <laughs> Eternal Warrior. I actually saw this one, and this one's actually a pretty nice change to it. Uh, they so they did some changes between these four here. Uh, so the Eternal Warrior seems to be have the most reliable way to get up to tier four damage bonus. So that seems pretty good. So Ice Fall Mantles, uh, grants an escalating bonus to stasis weapon damage when getting. Rapid stasis kills. When you activate your class ability, you immediately gain the highest tier bonus. So that's pretty nice because um, stasis, I feel like, again, stasis is going to do a big bonus if you want to do big damage with your stasis weapons. Sweet. Class ability should be up all the time. Uh, most of the time anyway. So sweet. I mean, that might be actually really good for if you like doing raw damage, if you stack that with some surges. Hmm, interesting. So Doom Fang Pauldrons. Um, grants an escalating bonus to void weapon damage when getting rapid void kills. When you get a void kill, void melee kill, you instantly gain the highest bo tier bonus. Good. Again, also, Titans do really like, Titans and Hunters really like their weapon damage, damage bonuses as like Warlocks, like more ability stuff. Um, but yeah, sweet. Can't complain. Again, we might need to, because void really depends to be survivability. Uh, so any more weapon damage is definitely a strength for it. Same with stasis. Controls the room, everything's kind of frozen, awesome, but how do you output the damage after? So those two changes, good, can't complain at all. Path of the Burning Steps, getting a solar grenade kill now grants the highest tier solar weapon damage. <laughs> they love this weapon damage. All right, they're just giving everyone de weapon damage, sweet. And then Eternal Warrior, arc, arc weapon damage too. Uh, this one was kind of cool though, because uh, since the, ex the exotic only grants its highest tier damage bonus automatically when your super, super ends, uh, the duration of the arc weapon damage bonus when your fist of super ends has been extended to 30 seconds. So the 20 second change, that's pretty good. That is not bad at all. Uh, and then we have the ACDO feedback fence. The exotic get, got a complete mechanical rework and now ties into the armor charge system. You know, I don't mind that because I think they should do more with it. Add more of those mods and stuff. Leave what they have and just add more because 
there's there's no, nothing wrong with having a bunch of these options for people to do something with because a lot of times like the ones they did with the, the boots they kind of need to adjust those because there's really not much to do with it or is it boots no sorry it's the mod the class mod um or class piece it doesn't really they need to revamp those a little bit and kind of change them up because i feel like a lot of those aren't even used or make them better keep them just make them stronger um sorry back on topic um okay so uh ju -ju 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 -ju. with the new perk uh when melee hits give you an armor charge wait with the new perk, when melee hits give you an armor charge, you take reduced damage taken while you have that armor charge. Sweet. Taking melee damage causes you to emit a burst of damage uh, that jolts targets, consuming your armor charge and dealing more uh, damage based on the number of stacks consumed. Um, that might be good for PvP. I don't know if it would be good for PvE. There's not a lot of melee hits you take. Um, if you don't want to let targets hit you, but maybe, maybe it could be good. We'll see. I like the use of armor charge. It's a creative piece, so good. Not bad. Hollow file heart. The uh, exotic often stands in the shadows of the more um, ambiguous heart of inmost light. Yep. To remedy that, we've removed its base energy to solar abilities uh, and replaced it with a perk that lets you build more into sunspots. We think you'll be seeing mo many more sunspots on the battlefield as a result. As for the perk that greatly increases your ability regen rate when your super is fully charged. Sweet. So, eh, not bad. More sunspots. That means more healing. That's the main thing solar works with is um, some of those builders throwing hammers as much as you can and then healing off of those. So not a bad thing. Warlocks. Aristocats verse. Um, we've added two more pieces of functionality to this exotic. Enemies near you when you're blink. Be oh, wow. Enemies near you when you blink become volatile. Sweet. Okay. Uh, maybe good for PvP. I don't know if you use it for PvE over other options, but you know, could work. Additionally, when you're using the Nova Warp Super, the dark blink ability no longer consumes super energy. All right. I don't know how much void is going to be used in the next season uh, as it won't be used in the, the artifact as much as the artifact really does tend to kind of screw the meta, but um, we'll see. Yeah, okay, more buffs. Awesome. Uh, Geomag stabilizers. While you off, while you've often heard calls to restore the perk that lets you top off your super energy by sprinting, the legacy of that <laughs> incentive still, still creates some uh, pretty silly play patterns. All right. Instead, we wanted to give players a few... A way to get more super energy, no matter how their, no matter how charged their super is. Okay, cool. Pick up ion traces while wearing the exotic will grant uh, additional super energy. Eh, all right, that works. More super energy, the better, because we like to spam out those supers with that one. The extended duration, anyways. This one I thought was super cool. So wings of sacred dawn, leaning into the or orbital weapon <laughs> weapons platform fantasy. We wanted to help players way to stay aloft longer. So if you can basically just be like an AC 130, <laughs> just raining in damage. And then this thing, this thing also allows, uh, so reloading was the main cause of float to end. Makes sense. The exotic now automatically reloads solar weapons. So I like how they put this, try this with Xenophage. Yes. Um, you're just gonna be an AC 130 landing in hell, especially with Xenophage. You will literally be that sound effect just going off. Um, <laughs> okay. That'll be fun. Um, all right, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see it. If, if, if Solar's in the, the, the artifact, then I, they definitely probably will be used. I mean, it, it I think it'll be a new one to use because they killed off the, uh, the last one. So, because uh, people are kind of figuring out what they want to use. And it, it also looks really cool too. The, the exotic looks pretty nice. Okay, Winter's Guile. Due to the nature of the Stasis Warlock's melee ability, this exotic was previously a disappointing choice, definitely. Um, we've at, because everybody's been using the, um, what is it, the Osmomancy gloves. Uh, we've added a new perk to this one, specifically for when you are playing your stasis subclass. Now combatants encased by their penumbral blast melee will automatically shatter after a short delay. All right. Uh, I don't know how much it'll be used, but um, Alzamanthi gloves are kind of a little better uh, so for the turrets and stuff. But eh, maybe something different. Maybe pretty good for PvP too. So ability preview. So this there was some massive change to Strand on here that they are ruining Strand, I think. And enough people I don't think play Strand unless you're tight. So, um, but we'll see. So they talked about here is the barricade ability being broken in PVP. So they're kind of just reducing it. So like tower barricade here, uh, base cooldown increased from 48 to 70 seconds. And then the maximum health reduced from 60 to 50. Um, that kind of hurts uh, Titans, but it, they should have a damage resist to compensate for it in PVE. So it just kind of hurts PVP. So. If you like the tower and barricade, yeah, they're kind of making it a little harder uh, to use that. They they just hate PvP. 
Uh, Thunder Crash, increased base cooldown from 500 to 556 seconds. Cool. It matches up for PvP also. That works. And then Knockout, uh, reduces damage bonus for players from 50 to 30. Okay. Um, kind of wish they would focus on other things, but all right, whatever. So Strand, this is the big one I was talking about previously. So Suspend is currently the skeleton key that solves combatant problems against all combatants. That's not necessarily true uh, because overloads, you know, suspended overload, it still heals. So they need to, if Stasis kind of does all of them, Stasis literally does all of them. I mean, sorry, correction. Stasis does all of them besides barrier because barrier, it teaches it like a riptide. It's so like riptide does its chill clip. Uh, hits it'll freeze the barrier but it'll still try to cast it after so you can technically freeze it all the way through consistently for the barrier but it's gonna keep trying to cast it so um that works actually better than suspend but suspend will will stop unstoppables and um basically all mini bosses or uh inquisitors or like yeah they make it yeah stasis is kind of just busted but it does no damage so it's not as fun to use so they they took away the suspend duration which i don't think is fun uh, so reducing the base duration versus non-champion PvE combatants from eight to eight, eight to five, and then they they did some mess around here with all the yeah increased snap damage dealt to suspended uh, boss combatants by sixty-seven. Okay, so they really just wanted to change all these threads. So I'm interested to see how this is gonna go. They change all these numbers all the time, so I'd really have to play with it to really see how it's gonna work. Uh, but they're reducing class. Class energy gain, the overall energy gain per damage for threat generation. Um, it seems like they hate Trant, even though they just made it. Um, but all right, we'll have to see how it goes. Um, these two you do you currently use, um, or I recommend you use in the mods uh, currently for my Strand Titan build. Uh, but they may have to change a little bit as they move things around. The only thing I was saying as a positive was the the threadlings increasing the threadling damage by 30 percent what they talked about previously along with the tangles reduction cooldown from 15 to 12. but i think it's enough to make it fun not really there's still other builds that are probably more fun to play um strand seems to be like a pvp thing for some of it i mean it's kind of busted for the crowd control if you want to be like a strand titan i think is really really good with it but like its main goal is to control the room and to not die so i guess it's kind of the titan thing uh, but whenever you're trying to do solo content, you have to really rely on your weapons. Um, so if you don't have good weapons, or you're not sure what weapons to use, then it becomes a little harder for Strand. Uh, I'd say it's more for experienced players to use Strand optimally. Uh, but for newer players, I would say go with something that does a lot of damage and then work, use your weapons to take care of the champions and then use your kit to do the damage and then kind of then work your way into Strand. Uh, but this is a interesting, just interesting look to it. Um, I don't know how they're going to do it because I feel like Strand is, is is lacking a little bit. They're bringing two, like one more aspect for each of them, but the new ones didn't really hit as much. So we'll see. Uh, the thread runners. Um, so let's see. We're also taking the opportunity to address feedback on a handful of Strand abilities and aspects. Yep. So uh, the thread runners, Silk Strike Super is a bit unforgiving for the live game, in particular PvP. So they're making some changes. Um, some minor changes so improve the increase the damage resist by 40 to 45 okay reduce suppression sweet um not that much change i guess for for me for pve stuff mainly uh but pv i don't know the most about it i play a lot of it for fun but i don't have the upper level so wouldn't be able to give the best experience for the pvp stuff uh but it seems while let's see anything here they have life vector health oh this is the this is the um hunter one sorry Hunter one, the Hunter one's actually the only cool one I thought from the aspects. All the other ones I thought weren't, weren't the, like the best. The Titan one's pretty cool. The Warlock one's just really meh. You really don't have tangles up enough to even feel like you're really suspending to then really get off of the grapple grenade and use the Threadlings. That's the issue. If you're gonna play Warlock, you really should like have some way with the Threadlings to get that crowd control up with the, without having to use a grapple. When they have to use the grapple, uh, not a grapple, um, the, uh, I'm forgetting shackle grenade haha -ha. shackle grenade um because right now it doesn't feel like you're using it so like destroying a tangle now creates a delayed suspending detonation cool still increase uh, so you can do it from a range rather than throw it you can just shoot it they're not always in the best position also so this is an interesting change they probably should have had it wander but i would have to do the actual wander aspect is have any tangles that spawn wander around the battlefield and then suspend targets like literally just shoot off suspendings like why not do that that would be awesome 
right? It's a little turret that goes around and suspends targets. That'd be sick. But instead they did this option. Eh, it's okay. Grapple always takes priority while active, regardless of whether or not a target is within range. Do grapple melee, okay, cool. Again, they're adjusting all these to make them, to change out which one's better, which one's worse. Uh, Cause I feel like people are only using like four of the mods and then not using any of the other ones. <laughs> so, uh, okay, well they'll change up a little bit. Threat of rebirth or threadlings. This might be decent for strand warlocks. Again, I would probably say strand warlocks are not the, if you go in order of strand champions, I would say Titans are number one then Hunter and then Warlock at the end. Uh, there's really other classes that are, or other subclasses that are better for Warlock to use, support the class or support the group, say mainly like, you know, Solar with Well. Uh, I know a lot of people are like crazy about Well all the time. It's really nice, but it's not the end all be all, but that's the best thing I would say for bringing something for your group for high level content, like have your Titan go Strand, have your Hunter go Void, uh, and then have your Warlock go Solar that we have all of them covered. And they also can, you know, help stealth everybody, control the room, and they keep everyone alive with that uh, Whale of Radiance. But that's just my two cents for it. So, um, they can all come in Season 22. Season 22 is actually coming up real quick. Um, so, um, we're, I'm actually excited for Season 22. Hopefully, they do some changes, get some lore stuff coming in. Um, they really need to get their stuff together, um, do some changes. The best thing I would say for Bungie to get everyone a little happier is to start making faster changes. And I think people will be much happier. Just start throwing things out there. The best thing you do is get a player base bass back is to just make changes fast. And then if it works for that week, awesome. If it doesn't, then get rid of it, right? Buff it, nerf it, buff it, nerf it real fast because it really doesn't um, affect, there's no competitive real big scene on that besides maybe in PVP. But like in PVE, there's you're like, if one, one week this weapon did really, really well, you cleared the raid faster, cool, but it won't make a massive change for any leaderboards or anything like that. So I would say the best thing Bungie could do is just, just throw out changes all day long but that's just my two cents hope you like my review of uh the this uh the dev insight here uh, i really hope that destiny kind of comes back to where it was i think it should be good but uh bungie's really got to get some uh fire under them and get some changes going because of their last update pissed some people off unfortunately um so let's uh let's hope that they can pull it around because everyone loves destiny we all love the game but uh don't forget to like and like and subscribe comment below your feedback what you thought want to hear your opinion definitely want to hear uh, what you what you thought about these updates and if these changes are a big change for you if there's an exotic that really you really like that got buffed or maybe they got nerfed or something that changed the play style and it kind of met that angers you let me know i'd like to know your feedback uh, in the comments below but as always i hope you have a fantastic day